Hello, and welcome once again to my channel where uh, my goal is to provide uh, Oracle-related educational content for your personal and professional uh, development. And if you continue to like uh, content like this, please uh, like this video, subscribe to our channel, and also enable notifications so you can stay informed of, um, of new when we release new content. And do not forget to share with your friends. So our video for today uh, is kind of a little bit of an explanation between archive log mode versus no archive log mode. And for us to be able to set um, a foundation for that, let's take a look at the Oracle um, architecture. Um, I'm not gonna go into any great depth about the different components of uh, the Oracle uh, database architecture. We have the database instance, we have the background processes. Um, but for what concerns us in archive log versus no archive log mode, uh, we wanna take a look at our redo logs. So um, when a transaction is issued on the database, um, that transaction, um, as it is getting processed, Oracle has what we call a write ahead protocol. And that write ahead protocol ensures that the vectors that are gonna cause change in our database buffer cache uh, get written first into our redo log buffer. Now the redo log buffer only captures the vectors, the statements that would affect the change. And so this is pretty critical for Oracle because for our read logs, um, we need those in order to replay in the event that uh, we have what we call crash, um, instance crashes or in, in, in a situation, in a crash recovery situation. So in order to set the premise, uh, uh, you know, read log buffer captures those vectors. Now there is a background process called the log writer process. Um, this captures the vectors, those vectors that are gonna affect the change and effectively write those statements into our online redo logs. And um, usually um, each group has one member, by default, you typically have three groups. So um, when the vectors get written into group one and it fills up, Oracle does what we call a log uh, switch. And we get to start writing in group two. And then when that finishes, it does a log switch it goes into group three and when group three fills up, now this is where it becomes very critical. Um, if your database is running in archive log mode, which means that these online redo logs are being archived using a process called the archiver, it archives these redo logs and store and converts them into archive logs and stores them on disk. Now, um, if this process is not, enabled within the database, then this circuit here is broken and our database is set to be running in no archive log mode. And in that case, because there is no possibility of our online uh, redo logs getting uh, converted or transformed into archive logs and being stored on this, what happens is as the third group gets filled up, we round robin back to the first group and start overwriting everything that was written um, um, captured before. Now, uh, why is that important? Um, because of course, we always have to look at uh, the possibility of recovering in the event that our database crashes and how much can we recover uh, seems to be of absolute importance. So now that we've taken a look at our um, database architecture and kind of see exactly uh, what happens when we archive and when we don't archive, uh, typically, uh, we would just proceed, you know, to show you guys how we would do um, in order to set our database to archive uh, log mode or no archive log mode. Now, remember, it is Oracle's recommendation that we run our databases in archive log mode because in archive log mode, our online redo logs are being converted to archive logs, and this gives us the possibility to recover from disk failure as well as instance failure. Uh, whereas in no archive log mode, we only have the possibility of recovering uh, up to the point where, uh, uh, up to you know, what redo logs we have. So um, that is kind of really important for us to understand. So let's go over to our database then and see um, how we can switch between archive and no archive log mode. So I'm gonna open up uh, a session here, an Oracle session. And I would make this a little bit bigger here for sure. Um, that way 
everybody gets to see. I will open up a session. Um, usually when I log on any server, I always do a cut on my Etsy or a tab uh, to see what databases I have. Always make this a good practice. And I also additionally might run a PS minus EF uh, and grep for PMON or SMON, uh, that's your preference, PMON or SMON. Um, and I do see that I have an instance of my prim DB that is currently running. So why don't I set my environment to my prim DB? And I would SQL plus as sysdba to get into my database. Now, um, in order to find out if your database is running in archive or no archive log mode, there might be a few things you can do. Um, one of the things is, uh, one of the options is we can actually just type an archive log list. And that command, once we hit enter, it is going to display for us the database log mode, which is no archive log mode. Uh, archive destination, since it's not in no archive log mode, we're not capturing any archive logs, but if it was, it would be using our DB recovery file destination, which is also called a fast recovery area. Um, another query that we could use is we could query uh, the V dollar database uh, view and make sure that we see uh, there is there is a column called log mode. So let's select uh, log underscore mode from our V dollar database view, database view. So currently it tells us that our current log mode is no archive log mode. Now, the purpose of this exercise is to show you how to toggle between archive and no archive log mode. And for that to happen, uh, the first thing you would need to do would also be uh, each time you are running or you want to change from archive to no archive log, Currently, we don't have any archive log mode, so it's really not that important, uh, but it's always a good thing to shut your database down gracefully. And the best way to do that would be to type a shutdown immediate. If I can type here, immediate. And then we wait for our database to come down. Uh, what shutdown immediate does is of course, uh, um, it does a few things. So uh, it forces uh, a checkpoint. Uh, which eventually uh, uh, kind of makes uh, uh, an update to your control file and your data file headers and makes sure that, um, you know, um, committed transactions um, are written down and on committed transactions are rolled back and uh, eventually brings your database down gracefully. That way there is consistency in, um, in what we call the sequence change numbers. So uh, we wait for that to shut down. And in a little bit, so our database is now down. So um, what we typically would want to do right now is to start up our database in the mount state. Now, uh, we certainly would be talking about the different stages of startup in maybe another video, uh, but in the mount state, uh, what your database instance does is um, it locates the control files and mounts the database. And now, in this stage, um, we are able to make changes to archive versus no archive log. Again, let's do um, an archive log list. And we are in no archive log mode. Now, to switch log modes, we would alter the database to archive log. And we hit enter. So the database has been altered. Now to verify, why don't we go ahead and type an archive log list again? And this would tell us now that, um, remember before it was in no archive log mode and automatic archival was disabled. So after enabling archive mode, we altered the database archive log. Now our database log mode is now in archive mode and automatic archival has been enabled. Now, as the archive logs are gonna get captured, um, the destination where we would use them, uh, where we would find them and store them would be in our DB recovery file destination, which is also called uh, the fast recovery area. So after we alter the log mode for our database, then we can alter our database to open mode. 
Now, open mode, of course, ensures that uh, uh, we are ready to accept connections from um, external users. So um, in a nutshell, kind of that's how it works. Um, let's go ahead and confirm that again with a select log mode from our V dollar database view. So we are currently in archive log mode. Now, this is going to be a similar process if you are running in archive log mode and want to switch out of archive log mode to no archive log mode, then certainly you would repeat this process. Uh, one other cool thing that um, I found out that we could do in order to verify if our database is running in archive log mode or no archive log, uh, we can run a process uh, a process list and a PS minus EF, and then we grab for the underscore arc process. Now this is a process list, right? So we are going to grab for the underscore arc process. And now we see that we have our arc processes running. This is an indication that uh, our prim DB has archival processes underneath um, and are running uh, to support uh, archive log mode. Well, so that being said, uh, now we've had a chance to um, really take um, a look at archive log mode versus no archive log mode. And, and, and one of the purposes of this video is so that we should also be able to remind DBAs of what implications um, there is for their databases or why they're running in either of these modes. So when running in archive log modes, of course, as DBAs, we have to make sure that um, archive logs, uh, in addition to other logs that, in, uh, in addition to the files that are being stored in a flash recovery area, uh, do not fill up the flash recovery area. So it is important for us to be able to monitor a recovery um, usage area uh, every day. So we can do that. Um, there are several ways. Enterprise Manager, we can do that. Uh, we could also run queries on um, the recovery area uh, usage. Uh, we could embed those queries into um, shell scripts and run them on cron as cron jobs. And we, you know, um, should really make it a habit of looking at those daily so that we don't, uh, we stay on the, on the proactive end and not reacting to when uh, our database hangs because our flash recovery area is filled up. Now, um, talking about archive log mode versus no archive log, we cannot finish that conversation without signaling the implications that this has as DBAs uh, when we are taking backups of our databases. And of course, Oracle remote recommends that we use Ironman. And um, Ironman, of course, has some limitations uh, when you're running your database in no archive log. Uh, because the database is not up and running, uh, you are not going to be able to take um, a full database backup or a backup of some database components uh, when your database is running in no archive log. Say, for example, you wanted to take a backup of a table space. If you're running in no archive log mode, you would have to take that table space offline, take a backup of that table space before bringing it back online. And of course, that doesn't tie well with our service level agreements, which the overall objective is to keep our database up and running uh, most of the time. Now, if you're running in archive log mode, you have a little bit more flexibility. Um, Ironman would be able to take, you know, hot online backups of your database while it is up and running. Um, you would be able to uh, perform different varieties of backups. You could, you know, backup, you know, using an incremental strategy. You could backup as copy. Uh, you could backup archive logs. And you also have the possibility of managing space in that way uh, by using Ironman's cross-check command. Um, and that cross-check command, of course, is going to help you, uh, depending on what you've configured as your service level agreement, it will help you manage your recovery area. Um, you could, of course, delete obsolete backups, delete expired archive logs, and things like that. So um, one of the things that, you know, uh, we must highlight, of course, is that as DBS, we have responsibility in maintaining those service level agreements. And, you know, running your database in archive log mode permits you uh, to have your database up 24 seven all the time and only bring it down um, when, you know, uh, you're needing to do some maintenance, uh, be it 
uh, quarterly patching, uh, be it maybe you know bringing it down for upgrades, or you know occasionally maybe when you change the parameter that's not dynamic and you have to bounce the database. Uh, but for those off situations like that, so um, Oracle, you know, Oracle recommends you run a production databases in archive log mode. And I hope that this video kind of helps you know give you um, you know a use case for that. Um, thank you for watching the video. Uh, on the top right of the screen, you would see an icon. Click on it to subscribe to our channel and um, continue to support the channel with your views, uh, like our videos. And uh, thank you very much. And I will see you in the next video.